Most of us don't spend time thinking about SIM cards until we have to. Those tiny plastic chips you poke into your phone with a paperclip, the ones that determine whether your phone can actually function as, well, a phone, they're kind of easy to forget until they stop working or you have to switch them out. But now there's a much easier way to handle all of that with an eSIM. You've probably seen the term pop up when activating a new phone or signing up for a wireless plan, but what exactly is it? How does it work? And more importantly, Importantly, is it something you should actually care about? Well, you can kind of assume what I'm going to say. It's yes, eSIMs are designed to make your life easier. And if you're using a provider like Mint Mobile, the process of switching and setting one up can be incredibly smooth. So let's take a look at it. Now, before we do, actually, I just want to let you guys know that there are discounts and deals available in the description below if you do want to try out Mint Mobile for yourself. So don't say that I didn't tell you. At its core, eSIM stands for Embedded SIM. It does the exact same thing a physical SIM card does. It connects your phone to a wireless network, but it's built directly into your phone's hardware. There's no physical chip to insert, no SIM tray to fiddle with, and no card to accidentally drop or lose. Instead, you activate your wireless service digitally. It's as simple as scanning a QR code or tapping a few buttons. To see how this works in practice, Mint Mobile is a great example. Let's say you're thinking about switching to Mint. You go to their website, pick a plan, maybe it's their $15 per month starter deal and go through the checkout. When it's time to choose how you want to activate, Mint gives you two options, physical SIM or eSIM. If your phone supports eSIM, you can skip the mail entirely. After your purchase, you'll get an email with a QR code or an activation link. All you have to do is scan that code with your phone, follow a couple of prompts, and just like that, you're up and running on Mint's network. No waiting for a SIM card to arrive, no swapping parts. It's fast, convenient, and surprising simple. This kind of convenience is a big reason why more people are starting to embrace eSIM. There's something refreshing about being able to activate a phone plan in minutes without tools, without shipping delays, and without any technical stress. It also makes trying out a new carrier way easier. For example, Mint offers a seven-day free trial via eSIM, which lets you test the network's coverage and performance without even canceling your current plan. It installs right alongside your existing SIM, and you can switch between them in your settings. So if you're on the fence about switching to Mint, the eSIM option gives you a no pressure way to test the waters. eSIM is also handy for people who travel often or need multiple lines. Since the chip is built into the phone and the plans are digital, you can store several eSIM profiles and switch between them depending on where you are. If you're going to Europe for two weeks, no need to hunt down a SIM card kiosk at the airport. You can just activate a local data plan straight from your phone before you even land. Most newer phones actually support eSIM already, so chances are you're set up for it without even realizing. Apple added eSIM support starting with the iPhone XS and every model after that. Google Pixel phones starting with the Pixel 3 are also supporting it, and so do many Samsung Galaxy phones from the S20 series and beyond. And as long as your phone is relatively recent and unlocked, you're probably good to go. But if you're unsure, Mint has a compatibility checker on their website that can confirm it for you in seconds. That said, eSIM isn't perfect, at least not quite yet. One downside is that not all phones support it, especially budget Android models or older devices. Another thing to keep in mind is that while switching eSIMs between phones is possible, it's not quite as effortless as pulling out a physical SIM and popping it into a new phone. You'll usually need to download and activate a fresh eSIM profile, which takes a few extra steps. It's not difficult, but it's worth knowing in case you swap phones often. Still, those minor inconveniences are pretty small compared to the upside, and when you're using a provider like Mint, the eSIM experience is about as smooth as it gets. They don't make you jump through hoops or dig through confusing menus. Whether you're setting up for a new plan or just trying the service with their free trial, eSIM activation is built into the process. One of the nicest things about Mint's approach actually is that they don't treat eSIM like some fancy hidden feature. It's right there on the checkout page. No fine print or tech jargon. They make it easy for for people who aren't techie to feel comfortable trying something new, and that's exactly what eSIM should be. It's not some futuristic feature for 
early adopters. It's just a better way to get connected, let's say. So if you're curious about Mint but not ready to commit, their eSIM trial is one of the easiest ways to test a new wireless carrier without touching your current plan. And if you decide to stick around, staying with eSIM just means you never have to deal with physical SIM cards again. So is it worth switching to an eSIM if your phone supports it? Absolutely. It saves time, it's more convenient, and a lot more flexible. And if you're thinking about trying Mint Mobile, eSIM is hands down the easiest way to get started. No shipping, no waiting, no stress. And that just about wraps up today's video. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any further questions for me, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget about those deals and discounts in the description below. At any rate, though, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, make sure to take care.